got Eps on later on today. Uh, a lot of people would kind of say that's a clear cut win for, uh, for MV, but for these guys to, you know, take two wins today, go into tomorrow and feel themselves, it'd be nice. However, the boys in blue are going up against Red Reserve, and we all know how good and how strong they can be. Kick things off, though. We're going to be jumping on board with Classic. He's already found one, but he's died twice. A great start for Red Reserve. I mean, pretty much the best start you could possibly have. <laughs> you have one point in the hill for Envious, and then they just get completely four men wiped. And now you can see Hugh, he's just waiting for the smokes to come in just to have the safety to cross. And by the time you can even have the safety to cross, you still have to win the gunfight inside the hard point. He does not. All of this time now goes to Red Reserve. They're going to have 47 points by the end of this hill. And they're even battling for the rotation new. And, and yes, they're going to fall, but zero is still hill. He can maybe pick up one, slow him down a little bit, wait for his teammates to come off spawn. Because again, Envy, they have to pour this pressure in just to get to ruins. Not a great start for the boys in blue. Okay, so strong start for Red Reserve. However, the boys in blue, as you said, they've, they've managed to break through ruins. They've not let it kind of spiral out of control here. We are going to go to split spawn coming in from Rated. So this could... Prove very nicely for Red Reserve. However, no streaks on the board just yet. We've seen a lot of potential coming in. Scraps, talk of potential. Two kills to his name. Can't find the third player, but Zero's going to find himself six feet under as Red Reserve break on through. They're going to take back that hard point. And now, MV trying to push through the middle, trying to push through that bell, and successfully as well. A little bit back and forth, but here's a question. How often do you see smokes getting used in the spot that Zero just did uh, to just crack through belt, just to go through that L push? We see smokes on occasion, but for that specific spot, I don't think it happens very often. And again, this is what Red Reserve needs to do. They just need to get as much practice in, play your worst maps, learn new things if you can. Uh, of course, though, as the situation stands, they do have a, a comfortable lead so far, but Envy, of course, they have the rotations to the neck. Uh, this Bunker Hill is the best money hill on the map. Envy can come back, tie this game, potentially even take a lead if they have a good hold. Puke finds two raid, does deny for now, but firmly in control of the bunker is Team Envious. And you see Red Reserve, judging by that minimap, they're looking to try and break from behind, waiting for those kills to come in. Puke first to fall, Zero's gonna start the pinch, and now we're gonna see one push from Cave. Red Reserve coming on in as the 3v3 does go down. We do see Huke spawn out, and that Bell spawn's gonna come in from Red Reserve, and they should be able to uh, kind of flood out here. Chino take him down, and again, Raiden coming up clutch with these important kills. Nine to his name already, but Huke, he's got other ideas. He's found two. There's the third. A player which can most definitely turn this game around for Envy. And he's looking for streaks as well. He's just going to surge forward. He gets taken down. And, well, he was trying to be the hero, but it looks like Red Reserve is going to hold on for that scrap time. And, well, now we go over to East Road, which we've seen once, and we're going to see it plenty of more times by the time Chance comes to an end. It's difficult to get a substantial amount of time. We'll see if Envy can pull some magic out of the bag. You see Decimate being pretty aggressive. He's got the mid-map cuts. And, frankly, Red Reserve, well, they got to deal with him, and Zero does just that. 85 plays 37, last hill of the rotation. Classic, trying to get out of the way of that grenade. Luckily for him, he has Hunker on, so he will eat that and soak it up. DPS 8's a little shaky, but Hugh right behind him, finishing player after player. Scraps bounce backs with a nice double here. And with 40 seconds left, Red Reserve, they're in a good spot here, but they're not opting to just jump on this hill, try and get as many points. It feels like they're really kind of playing this slow, trying to guide themselves through this game and obviously pick up as many kills as possible, but Hugh's gonna be the first to challenge. We'll find one he's going to dip out to. Well, what we saw from Red Reserve right there is, well, you smoke off the cabin cut because you don't have control of the cabin, so you make sure you get lock off that line of sight. And then they didn't get the hill right away because they were waiting for the nades to come in from off spawn. As soon as the nades go off, you know you have the clearance to go inside the hill. And again, it's East Road. You can see how much it actually matters because Envy ends up getting the final few seconds. But first set of rotations is in Red Reserve. They're going to have, well, nearly a 50-point lead. Okay, well, Red Reserve trying to break that triple digit mark. And as we see, they will here on Cave. Let's jump on board with an Astro Gaming listening for Red Reserve. Thank you, 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 thank Bunk, back, bunk, back, bunk. I'm from bunk. Yeah, I'm from bunk. 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 I'm from bun
Why do you need me to pick up? Why do you need me to pick up? You, please, you, please. I'm old. P4, P4, P4! Must be V4, P4. Look at me, that one's old, one's old. Two mid, you're gonna be two mid. Four, five, two. I got two, I got two. Four, five, two. Four, five, two. Are you left breaking your eyes? Dive to left, dive to left. You dive to left, Joey's in the dead. Dive to left, dive to left. Gino's been G. Gino's been G. Gino's been G. Push up onto mid, P4 to mid. I got you, I got you. I got mid, I got mid. I got mid, reset. They're bell on you, they're bell, they're bell. Wait a minute. I dodge nades. I have to go. Right side, you dead. Left side, you, left side, you, left side, you. Wait, really? I saw you, I saw you, I saw you, I saw you. Yeah, I saw you. Two there, two there, two there. I got two, I got two. He's two there, two there, two there. Go on. That's right. I need the ramp, I need the ramp. I need the ramp, I need the ramp. 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 Healing you, healing you, healing you. He's absolutely there. He's absolutely there. I see him with nade as well. He's gonna be up top, he's gonna be up top. Yeah. Just blow the stairs, man. Blow the stairs, blow the stairs in the corner. Weak, 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 top. Oh, you, you, you. You just pushed out. Red Reserve keeping the communications high, but Envy crawling back into this game just 25 points away. They're about to break into that 100 point mark. The Red Reserve squad, though, they're setting up here for Bunker. Overall, what are you taking from that chance? I mean, honestly, everything in the, the listen in sounded good from what I could understand. You know, the only thing that kind of went wrong was Joe calling out a player that was absolute that turns out he wasn't. But if I was Joe's position, I would have said the exact same thing. I can't believe that player had another bullet left in him. Either way, though, the, the hole right now from Red Reserve. Scraps is in the back. He's locking it down. Hughes trying to make a play, has the STG for the job, but Scraps goes huge, stays alive, covers the back, and he doesn't get the good spawns, and now it's a hike to go to next. It takes 15 seconds just to go from back bridge to the front, and that's if you even win the gunfights, which you can see are not going their way. A bunch of STGs, a bunch of ARs in the hands right now of the Red Reserve players, and, well, they're just keeping them at bay. This is looking really solid for Red Reserve again. Holding this bunker, we know it's the money hill, but sometimes it can be broken. Spawns flip, Red Reserve not letting that happen. Double from Scraps, can he make it a triple? Yes, he can. One last player is going to find him. It's going to be decimated, but as well, the communication, we heard it flowing in the Red Reserve listening. He'll be calling that out straight away. And those last eight seconds going in Red Reserve's favor. I mean, you hate to see it. Scraps out here choking quad feeds. You expect a little <laughs> bit more. He got brought onto this team to do big things. And a triple kill is OK. But for Scraps, I don't know if it's good enough. Either way, though, uh, Envy once again on East Road. Well, I was going to say they have the spawn that they want. But Raided actually comes in behind. We'll see if he can do some damage. He's able to find one, cause the distraction. Now his teammates spawn in. They got the pinch coming. Envy spawns out. This is Red Reserve that's going to be getting, well, I would say sometimes. But again, it's just very difficult on East Road. One thing to note, talking about time rated two and a half minutes at real time. Zero and Scraps have 16 seconds combined. Really just playing their roles. They have a plan. They're executing it here. They are up by roughly around 60 seconds here on Envious. But we'll be going to our third rotation shortly. East Road is where you want to start to control that cabin wall. We do see number four classic down there at the moment. Grenades coming in. We're seeing team kills as well. Decimate taking out zero. But Envy, they're in a pretty good spot here. Classic is setting up for this next hill, and he can dictate the pace. I mean, they're in an okay spot positionally, but frankly, I think they just kind of need to get more kills. And well, by they, I definitely do not mean Hugh leading the lobby at 31 kills. Actually, this, I, I take that back. They don't need more kills. This is a prime example of Red Reserve. They're, they're what? Being outslayed, negative three for zero, negative five, negative, or plus three, minus five. So they're getting outslayed by what? Eight, nine kills, and they're up by this much. It's a, it's a better understanding, it seems, from Red Reserve, quite consistently so. Uh, at Anaheim, they had the exact same thing. So I was thinking more kills for Envy, and then I saw a huge stat line. So, <laughs> yeah, clearly not it. Well, kills are coming in. Can they capitalize on that? Points going down either side. Two for Red Reserve as the contest comes in. Classic jumping on and off, trying to find himself a couple of points. But last 20 seconds, no one wanting to over-challenge. We, of course, saw... Second hill over towards Ruin can go really back and forth between these two squads. Scrap time is going to go to Red Reserve. They may be able to just sneak upon that 200 mark. Already rotating here. They could have the one up over Team Envy. We'll see what Envy can do. Uh, last time they got set up over by Ruins, you saw it was a couple smokes coming out of L that allowed Red Reserve to kind of slip through the cracks to get inside to do some damage. And this time, Envy, well, they have another opportunity to full setup. And again, this is a hill where they could take the lead on if they play it perfectly. Hughes doing some damage from you. The U control is by far, I'd say, the most important part of this. And, well, he needs more bullets to find the second kill. And you see, just get the kill feed like Hughes. He's trying to do it all himself. He has 34 kills. You look at the kill feed, every one of his teammates, they just die. Down, but not out. Team Envy they're going to try and battle their way back into this one. Joe, find another double. He finds himself 25 and 25, but he's on a five-kill streak, is Joe. Puke's still alive somehow in you. He's on a kill streak of his own. He's going to make it four, but here's Joe. Can he get that glide bomb? He's trying to get away. He's going to get away with a 
second just to spare, re-challenging. No streaks again. Actually, interesting enough chance we've not seen any streaks. Ah, it's been a, just a straight gun-on-gun -gun game. And again, this is where Red is going to be able to thrive. That, that's a hill where Envy gets the full setup early on. It looks like things are going great. And I think even if you looked at just the kills from that individual hill, they're probably close to even from both teams. And Red Reserve, they just find a way. They get that perfect three down. The break is perfect. And then they just get more points. And now the break coming in a bunker. You see it. They smoke off the front. You don't have to deal with the AARs. And it's just step by step. You kill the guy in front by smoking them off. You kill the guy, fire cut. You get the guy side, and you surge on through. This is Envy where they had this set up once again, and it takes zero time at all. It is a clean four down for Red Reserve. Four down. They're going to spawn at Bell. They're going to have another bite at the cherry. Gino finds the header rated. Zero. He's going to fall as well. Maybe something here for Team Envyers. Joe still rocking it with this STG. He's been playing fantastically in the role. 29 and 21, but really picking up those all-important kills. And this I like from Scraps, just getting in and contesting here, just stopping Envious even get close to that 200 mark. They're doing a fantastic job so far. I mean, Scraps literally just by himself inside the hill. He even buys his team an extra, what, three, four seconds in that situation, which every single point is going to matter as that game clock ticks down. Now you can see the opponents in Cabin, Red Reserve. They had three players over focused on No Man's Land trying to get the hold on the right side. This is the first time Red Reserve has started on East Road from this side of things, and this is the most time we're probably going to see on East Road. It's taken that long for Envy to even get to the point where they can contest from a map, and then Scraps is just waiting, taking him down. It might be game on Red Reserve uh, on the East Road Hill. They're just too good. They're surging forward. They're spawn killing at this point. Zero getting the cheeky three-piece to end the game. It's just dominance. It's yeah. just sheer and utter dominance coming out from Red Reserve. Strong stuff all around, and we saw three-piece from Scraps. We saw three from Zero. But the play that really kind of stood out for me, surprisingly, isn't going to be huge. Yes, he did great for his team, and he found himself a couple triples as well. But it was Joe. The way that Joe was kind of moving around, just kind of dictating you know, where his team w was up and when obviously plays were spawning out. I thought a lot of important kills came from Joe using that STG sometimes, obviously with the addition of scraps, he's had to change a little bit, but performing against the best in the world here, Red Reserve, take map number one. We're gonna go into search and destroy very, very soon. But they, we've seen this from Red Reserve before, Chance, go up in series and then maybe throw it away at the CTF. I think they've been, I know they got reverse sweep by Echo Fox. I know the almost reverse sweep happened or another one did against TK, TK yeah. whoever it was. So the damage has been there. CTF has been their weakest game mode by far. That's definitely the, where they're <laughs> gonna to wanna to see improvements. But I mean, I just kind of wanna to touch on the hard points some more. It's okay. not even like Joe with like, like how many individual kills can you pinpoint of just like a one-on-one -on -one gunfight? Like the three pieces are nice. But I don't see those one-on-one -on -one kills. I see when they're breaking a hill, collective four down. I see when we're watching Huke inside of you and we're like, Envy's got the hold, like they're doing something right. Then you look at the kill feed and all of a sudden, everyone on Envy just dies at the exact same time. The, repeatedly, the breaks from Red Reserve were just done almost perfectly. And I think that shows in the stats of when Red Reserve are being outslayed, you know, they get four kills and they break a hill and maybe get 10, 20 points from it. Sometimes when it's going back and forth and, you know, Envy are tallying up eight, nine, 10 kills, you know, the, the, the points aren't there. It's just going back and forth and trading out. We didn't see any streaks at all. We saw Joe get very close towards the end. But of course, Red Reserve kind of coming out on top. Yes, they started to pick up the slain side of things. But when you've got a team that can win, being outslayed like Red Reserve, it's kind of crazy. Well, I know a lot of players on Red Reserve love to talk and rated as among uh, the best of the best. And I think Jess had a moment to catch up. So uh, we'll see if he shared some interesting thoughts. Thanks, Chance. Yeah, well, as can be expected, Red Reserve are feeling really, really good. When I asked Rated specifically how you're, how he was feeling uh, playing Envy, he said, well, just about the same as we always are. After all, we're, the be we're better than all the other teams. So at this point, we're just kind of going through the motions before playoffs. So uh, it's not really surprising that they are feeling very, very confident. However, I did also speak with Envy a little bit. I talked to Chino, and he said that they're feeling a lot better about their s and He said that's where they've kind of made the most of their mistakes recently, but that he personally has been working a lot on uh, regaining a lot of confidence and playing playing SD a lot more confidently. So I'm pretty excited to see how this next game goes. Chance and Momo, back over to you. Interesting to hear from both sides, of course, getting a bit of an insight from Chino and the boys in blue as well from there. Obviously, we're going into Search and Destroy, and this is where Red Reserve have been pretty clinical. They've been great at it as well, and uh, have been kind of leading the series in, in 2 0 fashion. And then that's where the CTF comes in, it starts to fall apart. Uh, but London Dock Search and Destroy, between these two teams, Chance, you've got Red Reserve obviously topping first place in the division. Envious, they're sitting in sixth. Do you see this going any other way than Red Reserve? Do you see some light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, again, 
I mean, if you'd asked me at the start of the day, I would have said there is zero pressure on Red Reserve. They can throw away series. For them, it, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Again, they're only playing for seeding. And for them, I think they really only want the first or second seed. Like, yeah. I, I, would, I wouldn't care if I play the third or fourth seed in the next division. You don't even know who it's going to be. But for Envy, everything is on the line. They, like, again, not technically need this win, but in my personal opinion, yes, 100%, I think they need the win or at least get two maps. Like, if you're going to lose, make it a game five because every map matters sort of thing. So I was like, Envy's going to come in with the fire, with the intensity. But, like, we didn't see that map one. Like, Huke had a, a great game statistically, but as a team, Envy, they were just getting completely outclassed. Now you go into London Docks s and I don't remember this until I saw the map set, but I actually cast it over Red Reserve playing Envy uh, back the first time around on this exact same map, and Rated dropped 19 kills. Rated and London Docks Search and Destroy is a deadly duo. However, he'll be going up against Geno Classic, Decimate, and Huke. Let's jump on board with Raided, see what his game plan is. Well, straight away, you see all the plays of Envy as Flood and B, so we'll leave Raided at the docks. Joe, no fear at all. Just running straight through. This is, this is mind-blowing. I mean, surely someone's going to turn to check it, right? No, no one's going to turn to check it. There's free kill number one, free kill number two, looking for the third. He guesses underground, he guesses wrong, but he doesn't even die. He stays alive. Chino looking for the hunt, and he gets it, but at this point, now Scraps is in for the trade, and the round is over. No one is watching the flank for Envy. They're set up. You have four people to watch what? You got to watch B-Cut, you got to watch Sandbag side, and then you got to watch the flank. <laughs> Do three things for three players you need to watch, because one guy has to plant the bomb. They left the lane open. Joe says, okay, I'll take the free kills. Thank you for the strat. And then he laughs at them. Afterwards, I, what are they doing? Like, why what? would you not? Why was no one watching the back? I just walked straight through. Joe starting strong here on the search to destroy, but Envy, I like the commitment. I like the way they just kind of no hesitation. They went straight for the bomb site, and yes, maybe if Red Reserve didn't have a player like Joe who was aggressive and you know willing to put himself out there, maybe that would have worked out. But look at this, Red <laughs> doing the exact same here. It's going to be a bloodbath at B. Scraps is going to fall first. Joe is the one to answer back, but classic. Crazy enough, he's running straight through. He's going to be running into two players. And Joe, he's going to find his third. Is he the fourth? Doesn't, doesn't need to. Uh, good round from Red Reserve. I, you know, after the first blood, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if you get out, well, so we obviously could see that all the pressure was coming in. Envy does not have that luxury, but if that first player gets the first blood, stays alive, you're in a better situation. Like, we just watched Classic basically run into, like, a triangle formation. He was yeah. literally getting pinched in from every single angle. Uh, again, obviously, the strat call from Envy was to play aggressive, try to flood through B. Little did they know, every single person from Red Reserve was going to be right there waiting. Well, as the rounds go on, we're heading to round three, and these are going very quickly. Red Reserve already found two. This time we're seeing something different, though. We're seeing an A hit, but Joe, is he just going to do the same again? Run straight through? Surely not. Surely not. Someone has to watch behind Joe. Finding the holes in the defense. I say hole. There's two lanes open. He could have run straight through B, underground, through barrel build. Someone's got to watch that surely after round one. No, okay. So I or know anticipate that. I know what you're thinking. Well, Joe did the exact same thing. So clearly, Envy should make awareness. No, no, no. You shouldn't be prepared for that. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Joe never does this on this map. We have never seen Joe with Mountain play aggressive mid-map on Docs s and It's not a thing. Why would Envy ever be prepared for it? I have no idea. Joe is catching me off guard with these sneaky plays. I don't expect it from a player like him. So we'll see now if Envy catches on to the aggression. Either way, uh, they're going to be red reserve, that is, on the offensive round. Trying to just stick it to him. Trying to go up 4-0. Trying to get some streaks for Joe. Kill total 15 in the lobby. Joe has seven of those. He's working towards streaks. A bomb in hand as well. If he gets this down, this is going to be streaks for him. He's going to dive straight across. He's waiting for the teammates. He's going to be baited out, but Chino does find him. Zero does answer back, but no streaks once again. That's big for Envy. I will credit that. And Chino, obviously, is going to be the one to take him down. But a 3v3. That bomb's pretty clear as well. Huke trying to head over there, maybe anticipating the plan. Zero denied. I will say, I think good idea, just poor execution from Red Reserve. Now they find themselves in a tough spot, but they have kind of a pinch in. Like, the flank has been the problem for Envy, and that's exactly what Raided is doing. He might have sensed Classic over by Apples, but now he might have to get the win. The gunfight, because Classic is going to sense him, but doesn't even take a bullet, and now Envy feels trapped. they got to look to two different directions. I, and I love this from Rated. He, he's found the kill, and now he's getting out of there. Scraps, unfortunately, for Red Reserve is going to fall, but Decimate 
is going to give a little bit of hope for Boys in Blue. If you're an Envy fan, this is a good round for you. But that bomb is in no man's land. Freddy can sneak up on him. He's going to find him, and it's going to be too late for Huke. Because the call-out's there, and surely not. Does he go for the plant? Eight seconds. It's going to be a cat and mouse chase. Surely knows where he is. Four seconds. He's going to challenge him and rated with a smirk on his face. Once again, knows he's come up clutch there. What I didn't like from that setup chance, and I'd love to hear from yourself, is rated the way he was able to get into tin. The cover from the back, I believe it was decimate. He's always going to be able to call that, but it takes two, three seconds or, or one or two seconds to be like, oh, he's coming in. But behind you, like instantly, he doesn't have that reaction time. Hugh has to be either lower docks or just on bomb. Like it, yeah. the option should be of like, look, I can see the entire cross from both sides. You just have to play in sight to be safe. And I can tell you which side he comes from. So, I mean, obviously he was decimate making that adjustment in the final second. So it's tough to say, but either way, we're, what month is this? July, the game has been out since November. You, you should have these down by now. Either way, red reserve again. Now, Joe choked the streaks, Raided looking for some himself. Do you need the streaks? No. Can you get them? Sure. Raided spotted two. Raided has spotted two. You see the red arrows directing themselves over. He's going to get the help of Joe. He's working on streaks, of course, so Raided looking to get that glide bomb. This is, uh, I feel a must win round. Envy, they need to get like back to back rounds here to get back into this. It's not looking good here. Zero peppering up a player in coal and look at scraps he's getting so aggressive joe's gonna find one but Hugh has the hot hand scrap does find the head of classic but he knows he's gonna be challenged i believe that's a team shot coming in from raiden now a 2v2 30 seconds left zero gets spotted by decimate but zero is able to get out of dodge and raiden has a 1v1 himself on the other side and zero is close to dying but close to coming out on top he feels the pressure and raiden's coming to help him out if he can that means that bomb can go down and decimate able to win at least one gunfight in the 1v2 you call him the glide bomb doesn't matter Hughes can be able to stay alive you might as well exit see if you can make the play he knows where he is Let's see if you can do something crazy Huke has got out of there. 1v1 for Rated. Now Rated. One away from streaks. Does he throw this round away? Does he let it go? Does he just go for a kill? I feel like Rated may just kind of go on a very wide flank trying to pick up a kill. Send some danger, but he's playing very aggressively here. Just trying to spot a player. 13 seconds left. Definitely not going for the plant here. Thinking about those streaks. Looking for Huke on the exit, but as the time ticks away, you can see Huke on the very right hand side of your screen. There it is. And there we have it. Round gone. Red Reserve will keep will keep trying to get those streaks. MB will have a round on the board. And a much needed one at that. The only potential issue there for Red Reserve of Raiden not going for it is that Hugh got two kills, the bomb plant, and the bomb blew up. So he's going to be close to streaks himself. Of course, though, obviously, Red Reserve's still in a good spot because if Raiden gets another kill, he's also got more streaks, and they have the 4-1 lead. So, uh, again, Raiden, he has rounds that uh, he can throw away to play for streaks. Not a bad play call at all. And now a lot of aggression over on the B side once again. We saw it from Envy's perspective. Now we're going to see it. Well, from Envy's perspective, again, the adjustment was there. Did they flood through? No, they sat there, pre and waited, and now they can flood on zero. Yeah, executed so well here. Zero is going to find one, but that is all he's going to find. Uh, and that's what Envy's game plan was round one. I think it was round one or round two, one of the two. But they find themselves back-to-back -back rounds. That's what I said they, they need. They can't go 5-0 down. They find themselves with a little bit of hope here. And I'm interested to see where Huke is now. I know I think he was 200 away from streaks or the glide bomb. Interested to see where he is after that round. Pretty sure he got a kill, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got an assist somewhere on the map. Yeah, maybe how grouped everybody is. So he might be very, very close to it. Or not? Did he die? Maybe he did. There we go. Okay, never mind. Is he really played die? That's crazy. Scraps has pulled out the sniper. Rated has been taken down. That's on the A Street. Rotating round here, both teams. Scraps is trying to take control of the A Street here, as well as Joe, but this is going to be a lot of pressure on Zero. So far as I'm concerned, this is the Joe effect. Envy has played so slow, even after getting the first pick, that they're just scared to make a decision. Now, of course, it's methodical. A bunch of A's just poured in on Zero. 
Now he's got to get out of dodge. Scraps, though, he might be able to find one pick, but he's going to have to find more than that. And you can see they're actually not pinking. They're getting the bomb down. They're doing it safely. Classic is watching the flank. Deathmate's watching the cross. Scraps is going to fall. Chino's hanging out mid-map. Systematic approach by Envy. Much cleaner uh, than what we've seen the first few times around. And there's the final kill coming in to perfection. Chino wins that first 1v1 against Rated. You see they took their time going over towards the site. I don't know if they had the spidey senses or if they were guessing that Zero was by Sandbags, but they had the utility. They saved it, got a couple nades in, forced them back. You got complete control. You don't overpeak the sniper. You make sure to pour the pressure on. And again, from what we saw from the first two or three rounds, Envy, uh, again, much, much cleaner in S&D. Three rounds back to back. It was all looking a little embarrassing in the first four, but... Now we find ourselves in round eight, and it's pretty much as close as it can be here. Interesting that Scraps has decided to keep the sniper. Definitely looking towards that A push. And I see Joe dive across with that bomb. And I think he's already on bomb. That bomb's gonna go down whether Chino likes it or not. Oh, and that's a huge kill onto Classic. Joe staying alive in the bomb side as well. Raider's gonna be traded out. Zero finds himself in a lot of trouble, and now it's all up to Scraps, and he's got a sniper. I mean, he knows it. He knows he's got to get aggressive. Decimate spots him. Huke's going to be able to watch the crosser if he goes into barrels. There's pretty much nothing he can do. He finds one miracle kill. He's looking for more, but he knows he has to check the bomb, and Decimate was ready and waiting for him. I'm always mind-blowing players hit shots like that, but again, uh, Scraps was dealt uh, an impossible hand. I think that was also a smart play from Envy, just the fact that they had Huke waiting around because Raided, even when the bomb's getting planted on the other side of the map, he hangs around that underground area all the time and yes he finds one but Hugh trades him out uh, and then whoever that player was red reserve that tried to trade Hugh I'm pretty sure he got Zero. team shot yeah he was getting shot from water steps by decimate he was obviously getting shot from Hugh uh, B cut as well so Hugh made the play uh, but I think it was a good read by Envy once again and that's four rounds in a row for the boys in blue tables are turned now the streaks are in the hands of Chino and decimate they've got a bomb as well to play around with here that bomb's actually going through mid map it looks like which is kind of crazy but classic he's uh, maybe just looking for a Bit of information. Chino trying to find the whereabouts of some of these Red Reserve players. There's the first. He's stunned. But he's not in a position to be traded out. Rated. Big kill onto Chino. I think for Red Reserve, they need to break this mold as well. They need a round just to kind of, you know, give them that confidence back. Zero. Cordon No Man's Land. Joe's coming on the wrap. Huke's already gone through. Joe's going to spot him. Huke tries to snap. Doesn't get it down. Decimate needs a kill for some streaks. He'd love to see if he can get it. Meanwhile, Classic does even things out to a 2v2. So, very, very doable situation. It's going to be on Joe for Red Reserve to make the play. Got one player wrapping back. That's Decimate. That bomb, though, in a very questionable position. Joe trying to hear for footsteps. Of course, you've got an armored scope, Decimate. And look at Joe now. Joe's starting to push forward. He's sensing that the players are starting to push out. And Joe's going to catch him off guard. That's going to be classic. And look at that. In, out, straight away. Makes that 2v1 a lot more appealing. And with nine seconds left on the clock, Joe's going to be the one to just check the bomb, make sure that nothing's going down. He's going to spot that and decimate. He's unfortunately going to run out of time here in round number nine. 5-4 lead for Red Reserve. So a big sigh of relief for them. Not losing five back to back, but they've still got a job to do here. I think that round, Red Reserve just kind of timed that 2v2 retake perfectly, right? Like, Envy, if they had made the decision to get streaks down earlier, or if they were like, hey, Decimate, you're one, <laughs> one bomb plant off streaks, let's give the bomb to you. If either of those things happen for Envy, maybe the round goes their way, but obviously they were dealt a tough hand once Chino gets picked, and they almost made the best of it now. Red Reserve, one round away from getting the win, and it looks like Joe's already in sight, already potentially going to be able to get bombed down, but Scrap sees the player cross, and Joe, well, knows he needs to get out with his life. Yeah, he decides not to do what uh, he did previously in the round. Trying to get something here. Oh my. Oh, scrap. Slither away. The first bloods have been crucial. Actually, favoring Envy. I run Evil. Five to four. Surprised that bomb isn't going down, but here it is. Now it goes down. Decimate control in top mid. And you have got Hugh all the way over at B. So this is going to be interesting. I think first blood coming into these are going to be very crucial. And Envy are going to make it a 2v4. 1v4 and the sniper again. This is going to round 11. There's one. There's two. He's looking for three and four. One's going to be up top. He plays aggressive again. This is the second time. 
Scraps has uh, gotten picked off just because he knows he has to go and check that bomb. His teammates did not give him the help that he needs. Uh, and yeah, I think this is going to be around 11. And Decimate is going to have more than just the glide bomb. I don't know if he gets all the way to the fighter pilot, but he's not going to be far from it. Either way, Red Reserve, they're going to have to pull a trick out of the bag. Or Envy, again, this is the match much more important for them oh, yeah. to clutch up. 100%. First, we already know Red Reserve in that top four. Decimate full streaks. Just don't get first blooded, Decimate. Don't get first blooded. What's Red Reserve's outlook on this? I'm not sure, obviously, they know about the streaks. Joe likes to get aggressive, and he's. Wow. Huke destroys Joe. Now, not only they have the number advantage, they have everything here. Oh, one's going to be spotted. Good night, Zero. Good read. And now he has to know the other guys are at B. His teammates are in full control of A. Decimate can play passive over by mid because Huke's got the help. And he can just call, wait for these streaks. He can just hang out, wait about 15 seconds, calling an artillery. That buys you another 15 seconds. Huke spots one mid map. That player has to run through the artillery. He gets away, but they should know they're trapped on one side. Chino's waiting for it. He's going to have the nade on one. I don't know if it kills. It doesn't. Still, though, 3v2, and he still has the fighter pilot. <laughs> This Surely has got to be an empty win. It, it, has to be. it has to be. It really does. Decimate and Raided. There we go. Fighter pilot coming on in. He's going to be called out. However, is he going to connect? Scraps goes down to the grenade of Huke. And that is it. Envy, clutch up in around 11. They're 4-0 down. Now we go to a game mode where Red Reserve have been sloppy. Maybe an understatement. They've been pretty, pretty poor at this game mode of capture the flag. Envy, they clutch up in a big way and maybe... They, uh, they start to see and believe that this is possible. And it was a great map as well. I, I mean, Jess said it, that Chino's words were, we need to work on the S&D, we need to get some fixes. And yes, those first three, four rounds were pretty rough. But after that, we saw a lot of like great methodical search and destroy gameplay. Even when they didn't get the first bloods, they were finding strats, they were trying to execute. It was great to watch. Okay, well, the boys in blue managed to clutch up in a round 11. Red Reserve just playing for seed here. Envy playing for that playoff spot. After the break, we'll be jumping in CTF for Envy versus Red Reserve.
all tied up here. Game one, Red Reserve versus Envious. Red Reserve take the hard point. Envious bite back in a round 11 search and destroy. Now we go to obviously capture the flag where Red Reserve have been a little bit on and off chance, but we're playing London Docks this time. So one of their more favorable maps. It doesn't make sense to me. It genuinely does. So like Red Reserve, we've watched them on Flag Tower pretty much since Anaheim lose like almost consistently. Now granted they're four and five on it, so it's still solid, but they've played that map all the time because everyone bans London Docks against them and their permanent ban is Forest. Envy knows this, goes into it. Well, Envy, it turns out their permanent ban is Forest as well. And instead of rolling the dice on that map, they said, we will fight fire with fire. Does Envy like this map? Yes, but again, Red Reserve, this is the one they've been uh, kind of desiring to play on. So we'll see what happens. Seems like they're both just playing to their strengths at this point. But as we are all tied up, this one's going to be an interesting one. London Docks obviously can get very, very out of hand very quickly. Last bit alive. It's going to be Huke. Just deny zero, but that's a four down, and we're going to see Red Reserve sprint on forward. They may need another wave of kills, but rated. It's going to be pre-aiming that one. Finds Classic. Joe finds Decimate. The flag is out, and now Rated is going to be fallen. However, they're going to know exactly where they are, and Scraps is going to need to get out of there. He's going to find himself through gate. And that's going to be the first flag on the ball, Chance. I mean, that was literally perfect when we saw it. Like, as soon as those kills came in to, like, open up that flag, we literally saw those three red arrows running up together. Then Joe made sure to not go into Cole, so they knew they spawned in the back, and then he pushed forward, knew they were going to spawn lower docks. It was literally perfection now, Joe. Well, he was trying to pull the flag in the back. He doesn't get it now. Classic and surge forward, and actually, this flag should be gone. The stuns aren't going to be there in time, so they got to go mid-map. And, well, now Decimate has the cutoffs, and Red Reserve says instantly, okay, that one's gone. We screwed up. Envy's going to tie it up one-to-one. -one. Let's make sure they don't get that <laughs> relay cap. No relay here for Envy. However, it is a good start to get back into this game. 1-1, one, one, series on map. Three and a half minutes left on the clock here. Classic just taking uh, the lay down in the middle of the gate. He's going to be punished, though, by Scraps here. As we see Chino trying to trade things out. He's going to find zero in the process. Reload that STG. But so far, we're seeing... Strong things from both squads here. Both have an, that aggressive play through the middle. Chino trying to find something on the flank here. Bro, Zero just got bodied. You have to point it out. That was like an insane shot from Chino. Either way, though, uh, kills getting traded out back and forth just a little bit. Decimate trying to be that last man up, playing a little bit of defense. And you can see uh, he does stave off the push from Red Reserve. They're going to be a little bit slower. And Vault Zero, Chino's won that gunfight once and won it a second time. And now Decimate has actually snuck through. Joe gets taken down, not before he kills Huke. And Decimate doesn't want to OE. He doesn't want to give Red Reserve that favorable spawn. He wants them to spawn useless. And, well, he gets what he wants until he dies. Rated pushing up down docks here. Scrap's going to be taken down by the barrel building, but again, trying to find these all important kills. Chino not going to find anything onto Rated. A zero finds the third. This is bad news. We need to see Decimate go big. He is going to go big, finding the double. Wow. He's going to just stop any type of push that Red Reserve had going for them. He could find his third as well. Decimate really coming up clutch there. Finds his eighth kill of the game. 2.0 KD right now. Strong stuff. Looking for more as well. Hunting him down is going to find that next kill in line. So again, kind of creeping up on some streaks, but it is going to be Joe that ends up taking him down. Huke, though, doesn't mind. He's going to surge forward, get as much control as he can. Both SMGs in their opponent's base. Huke, though, gets dropped. And now Joe, he's going to have the flag. It's going to be gone. Classic is watching mid-map, and now Classic has to make a decision. And, well, I think he's going to be gone, but a lot of huge gunfights he needs to win. There's the first, but he's got to deal with the double team. He's just going to dive this flag in. He's going to try. He will. He's going to get the flag and the kill as well. How close is Joe to streaks? That's the question. Not far away. 600 points acquired. And now he needs to play for these, I feel. Looks like he's doing just that. I just want to highlight, like, how fast caps can happen on London Docks. Like, literally, Joe wins one, one gunfight, and all of a sudden, he's just gone. You have to be perfect on both sides. You can't afford to look the wrong direction, which Envy did just for a moment. Now, though, they get three down. Rated has to make the big play. He finds one easy trade. Looks like, though, he gets shot in the back. Now, this flag is gone, and every time Red Reserve scores, Envy's like, we got you. We got you back in 30 seconds. Not a problem. 50 seconds left on the clock. It is going to be all tied up, and it's good to see the strengths of both squads here battling it back, really showing how good they can be. But I tell you what, Envy, they're not done just yet. Brady is going to find Huke. Chino trying to find something over the box. Not going to happen as Scraps down low, but the flag is out. Chance Classic running away with it. Decimate trying to cover here. 
finds the first, the all-important one. That flag's gone. That flag is home, and that's going to be 3-2 to Envy. We saw the first time around. Red Reserve, after Envy gets one, they set up to stop the relay. But this time, it doesn't even matter. Let's go past that. Red Reserve is now surging forward. Chino finds one. He's going to need to find the second. And, well, the big kills right now coming in for Team Envious. It shows the last one. He's able to do a little bit of damage, but he's got three players he's going to be dealing with. It shouldn't be enough. Joey's going to find one with nine seconds left. He's all on the player just to touch the flag. However, there's a couple of players waiting there. Not going to happen. Scraps taken out by the grenade. 3-2 at the half. Envy coming out here. All guns blazing. They'll be happy with that half. Absolutely. You can't even analyze London Docks with how fast the, the flag caps come in. But the first time we saw Envy get the counter cap, Red Reserve gave it up completely, turtled up in their base and said, we're not going to let you relay. Well, the second time around, it was, I think, Chino picked up two on those players trying to ride back to protect their flag. Red Reserve, they played it right once. Envy, though, got the best of them the second time around. And uh, obviously, one flag lead. No one in the world would be comfortable with that for an entire half on London Docks. Oh, no. So pressure, absolutely, is still going to be on. Uh, but with the way Decimate's been killing, the way Chino's been killing, Envy, they can pull it off. Still, though, you got to be perfect. This is the side where we do see a lot of teams kind of capitalize on those relays. Red Reserve, obviously, with the slain power that they have, obviously, they can do that. But Envy, they're, they're no slouch at all. They'll be the ones firing right back at the Chino. 12 kills to his name. Decimate 13 as well. As we do see a bit of a slow start here for the first 30 seconds. Chino surging forward. He's already found, I think, two or three kills on this side. It's actually going to be classic that cleans them up. Zero's the last one alive. And now you got those four blue arrows. Even smoking it out, not the cross. They didn't get it perfect. And they left him. They left him. And now Joe might be able to find the second. He's trying to hunt him down. He gets dropped. And now Scraps is going to be too far away. There was a small window of opening there. But now that's a guaranteed flat cap for Envy. And they're just looking for more. They're still in the base. You gets dropped, but you still got decimate. And, well, he falls as well. So Red Reserve, they clear the base, but still they find themselves down by two. Six flags already. Chino up close and personal with the bar. Zero is going to trade things out. I found the second there, but in a poor position. You see Classic utilizing a little barrier in front of him, and Classic's on the hunt. Finding uh, this last player. He knows where he is. I thought he did. No, he didn't. Rated denies him off that. Rated the company will find a couple of kills, but Envy still up in the face of Red Reserve. Control in this barrel building. Red Reserve, that's two flags down here. Two flags down and stuck in their base. Zero's trying to clear it out, but they know they got to deal with Decimate. They know they got to deal with the spawners that are coming in, and Decimate is shredding. The man has 18 kills. His teammates are falling around him, but he's looking for more. He's going to find the turnaround kill. He knows where Zero's going to be coming from. He hears it. He wins it. He's looking for more. Finally, he gets dropped, but it's basically a one-man army. Now you got two players surging on the flag. Duke's forcing their spawn out, and he wins the gunfight. The flag is out. The flag is gone. It's a foot race. Classic. You just got to watch the cuts. He's able to find one. He's looking for the second. And does he spot him? Does he spot Joe? He's going to get through. I don't know if the shots come in, but now they definitely find him. That's not the flag carrier. Joe trying to get the flag. He's trying to get it out. He's trying to go. He's going to get trapped in, but he wins the gunfight. Finally, though, Chino is there for the cleanup kill. And Huke, well, he's going to get the capture. Envious are playing it beautifully. They got the 5-2 lead. It's just another CTF for Red Reserve at this point. Something is not clicking. And we saw, obviously, uh, Raided take to social media. He's kind of talking like, yeah, we're losing them, but it's by one flag every time. London Docks is not like that. They've been losing a lot of Flak Tower. I think they lost one Autumn Forest. They tried out their, their technically best map. And yes, it's not over. But right now, Envy, they're looking a much better squad, and that's coming from Decimate, really. I mean, again, I was nervous for Envy coming into this Red Reserve Chino undefeated 3-0 like since Anaheim, but Decimate said, no, thank you. I'll be just fine. And Chino said, oh, it's cool. I don't mind it. I'll take the bar. I'll go on kill streaks. Uh, I'll get some score streaks as well. And now it's Envy again surging forward. Red Reserve is basically just stuck. He got one player scraps. He's trying to go for the OE, but he's going to have to stop the flag, let alone pull the flag. And he got the glide bomb to come in and stop him. Scraps has to flood into fire. He doesn't even make it. Now whoever's capping the flag is just going to get even even more points, working to score streaks of their own. Envy, they've run away with the game. Four flag lead. They got all the streaks in the world. They're looking good. And again, it cannot be understated. It is it is virtually a must-win matchup here for Team Envy. And this is going to give them all the momentum, all the hype, all the energy to go into that second hard point and close this one out. If they win here, they've got an Epsilon, a very weak Epsilon in 0-11 and 11 coming up later today. And then they've got EG tomorrow. 
That's that room. That's that path. And, and the EG match, even if they win this, even if they beat Epsilon, I think they absolutely have to beat EG. So that, that's the high pressure one. But if MD gets the win against Red Reserve, that pours the pressure on phase. It pours the pressure on EG. Even puts a little bit of pressure on TK and Echo Fox. Who yeah. are technically completely safe right now. Uh, of course, though, we do have to get there. It's uh, a mere formality at this point to try and finish this CTF. You might as well uh, play for some stats. And why not? Uh, if you got 24 kills and 21 kills, try to rack it up just a little bit more. 35 seconds, zero. You cannot get out of this with the flag. The poor guy is stuck there with two artillery barrage, two fighter pilots raining down. This game is over. It's going to be 6-2 to Envy. And Red Reserve really needs to do some rethinking on CTF. Yes, it's been one flag here, one flag there. But then they turn to docks, and this is a map which, I'm going to be honest, I was brutally very confident in the boys to kind of close this one out. But Envy, they've come out. They've destroyed Red Reserve, and that being decimate 25 and 16, 23 and 14. Yes, sometimes streaks will feed more streaks, and flags will feed more flags. But it's the way it works. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And right now, Red Reserve are under pressure, but... In a sense, they have no pressure. You know, these guys aren't playing for anything but seed, like you've pointed out, Chance. Envy right now, they're one map away. Absolutely. Uh, and again, it's a huge one. As many maps as they win is beautiful because you end with tiebreakers. Well, it comes down to map count, whether it be the head-to-head -head or the overall. Uh, the situations, uh, again, for this division are going to be outlandish. They're going to be wild. We'll try to make uh, sense of them as we go along. But either way, I, I wouldn't even say necessarily no pressure for Red Reserve. In terms of standings, yes, absolutely. But if I'm Red Reserve and I just lose the CTF on the map I was previously undefeated on, I'm hyper concerned because now yeah. it's not we just need to fix one map. We just need to be good at Flak Tower and we'll be okay because we can ban Forest. Now it's you got to be concerned about all maps, I guess. Like if they're losing like that on Docks, granted that's just the nature of London Docks itself, but there's a lot of great CTF teams in the game. And if you're trying to win an entire tournament, you got to be better. Exactly. And that CTF is that momentum changing game mode where sometimes you're up two and you know you start to throw a series away. In this case, though, you level and now you go into game four in a must win. You know, you've got to win this Doc's hard point, which we know Red Reserve are very good at. But Envy, right now, they've just come off a 4 0 to 6 5 reversal in the search and destroy. Uh, the CTF was uh, a one sided affair in 6 2. They've got all that momentum with them right now, and I feel they need to close it here. Of course, if it does go to game five, great. We'd love to see it. And of course, they can close it out there and then, but. I think Envy, they'll want to do this one in four and uh, look at that Epsilon game a little later on. This is also like the pure chaos option. So like, obviously, if you're an Envy fan, you definitely want to root for them to get the win because you want them to be as uh, in good a position as possible. But if you don't care about either of these teams, you just <laughs> want some wild stuff to happen. If Envy gets this win, you could see some ridiculous things. There's a couple teams that could finish and tie at eight and six or seven and seven, and the possibilities run wild. So if you just want to root for some chaotic options, pull for Envy in this. Or if you're European, obviously, uh, go ahead and stick to rooting for Red Reserve because the other two European teams are all the way at the bottom. It's our only hope, Chance. It's our only hope. Is it good hope? Red Reserve, they've been doing some great things. But right now, 2-1 down here against Envy. Heading back to London Docks for the third time in a row. I think at the last map is St. Marie. Correct. For Search and Destroy. Look classic. And the boys of Envy looking to end this one on Docks. Rated and company will be looking to push this to that game five. Last search and destroy ended in a round 11. Are we going to see it? Let us know. Join in. Hashtag CWLPS4. Get involved. Right now, if you just joined us, Red Reserve are down. They're not out, though. MV looking for that all-important victory here today. It's a big day for the boys in blue. They've got two games. Red Reserve and Epsilon. Europeans best and... Europeans, I, d I was going to say third bet. I don't even know by now. Fifth? Fourth. Fourth, Fourth best. Yeah, Fourth, yeah, maybe. Unilad. Unilad. Splice, Unilad, Epsilon. Anyway, less of Epsilon, more red reserve. Team Envious. Let's get this one underway. Maybe London Docks is just their map today. We'll have to wait and see. Let's kick it off, Chance, on Hardpoint.
See if Decimate can let it ride. I think that's what Paradox is thinking, just because of how much the man was shredding this last map. But he's going to be one shot. You got to imagine that's just going to be a free trade. And there it is. Uh, you know, it is going to be Hugh inside the hill, though a little bit standard as we see. I think on Forest, it was Red Reserve that had the, the perfect opening break, but those on Statue are near impossible to have. But Decimate gets first blooded, uh, if you call it that, in Hardpoint. Immediately storms back, finds another two. Now he's watching the cross, feeding the information to his teammates. But his teammates, well, they're all just going to die. Joe finding three in a row. Four to two right now. Looking for those streaks. I tell you what, streaks on this can be very, very brutal. The statue hard point, obviously. A catalyst for some of them, but it's really on this main street. Joe pushing forward. He's going to find another. Sharp shots will find Fukin. He's in a really good position, but he needs the help of his teammates. He's going to get those spawns back useless for one player. However, Zero is going to be spawning out. Joe, a lot of pressure here. Oh my goodness, this is just a lot of pain. But the movement. He's found himself back and forth. He doesn't know which way to look, but he's got the glide bomb. Decimate's taken out. And interestingly enough, we're going to see Scratch push right around the flank here. Not the best stun in the world. It's going to do more damage to him, but either way, you see his teammates in support. There is a player coming around back, though, who kills Joe before they kill Raided. I'm pretty sure Decimate would have actually done that on purpose. If not, either way, he'll take it. That's a, a smart or beautiful kill, so I think it's only the glide bomb coming in for Joe, which, honestly, he might just need to invest on this hill. 30 seconds left, but maybe not. Zero finds two. Raided finds one. You see the nades are going to get the fourth. Envy, though, spawning right back up. They're going to be right back inside the hill. So tough to break from this side yeah i mean you get three four down pretty much there and those three or four are right back up right back in your face red reserve cut their losses they're gonna try and set up here down by the docks interesting to see when that glide bomb does come in but for now it's gonna stay in the back pocket of joe and envias are gonna try and pinch upon you see chino picking up a big double he's getting loud on the main stage as well red reserve this is this is not looking good Still though, Scrap's trying to be the hero. He doesn't. That is a, a pretty clean break. It's not over yet because it's going to be that 50-50, that contest-heavy surge. Hukes inside the hill. The question is, when does he get aggressive? He's got teammates to work with. They just need to go for that good old bait and switch. Chino's trying to keep other players at bay. He hears the player on steps. He knows Raid is going to be there. Goes for the pre-fire and he falls, but his teammates inside the hill are making the move. They know where Raid is coming from. And well, the pre-fire from Chino even helped out. Huke on the attack. He's looking for streaks. He's not going to find him, but you know what Envy finds? Momo, they find those final 20 seconds inside the hill. Well, for Red Reserve, they're not going to give it up, it looks like. They're trying to take those 20 seconds away. They very possibly could do. Zero does deny Classic, but still going in favor of, uh, of Envy for a second. Red Reserve just take it right back, and Envy are thinking about barrel building, but Red Reserve, they bite, they bite back very hard. They get that scrap time. They have the spawns. Can they hold on? Barrel building. Up next, I just feel like this is going to be such a close half point. Red Reserve, though, the master class of getting out Slade and still winning for the moment. The slaying, well, about even, as even as it gets. But Envy, they're the ones that are going to be surging forward. They're going to push Raided all the way back. Who's able to find one. Decimate doesn't even care about going for the trades. Joe, though, calling in some streaks. He can kill basically whoever he wants. And he actually goes for Chino. Doesn't want to get him outside the hard point, but calls the players out mid-map. Scrap, scraps surging forward. and. Decimate doesn't even know what direction to look. He knew that Raided was in the back that entire time. Raided plays like molasses. He didn't understand the pressure was coming from, and Red Reserve will take full advantage. They're going to get the scrap time. They're going to be able to, well, I was going to say take the lead, but you might have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Raided picks up two, actually, and yeah, it is going to be Red Reserve. They're going to be able to take that lead. They're going to be able to move into Cranes. Raided looking for some score streaks of his own. Yeah, I think these score streaks will be crucial for Raided. We didn't see any score streaks on... Uh on Arden on on Forest. And again, that just kind of shows the caliber of both squads. You know, they're, they're able to kind of pinpoint those players, take them down, whether it's grenades or gunfire. What a close game as it stands. 85, sorry, 84, now 85 to 81. Envious, that slightly, that slight advantage, but it's neck and neck here. And this is rated again, just playing Mike Velasquez. He doesn't care of even getting the players outside the hill. He's just playing for the streaks. He's letting his teammates uh, do the, the tough work, if you will. He's just trying to clean up the kills because if he can get them, that's much more important. Now you got players tagged up inside the hill and rated again. Still, he's barely moved. He's gotten one kill in the past 45 seconds, but that's all he needs. That's all he needs. He's waiting for those players to funnel in. He can feel the pressure coming in from the backside. He knows where Chino is and he's going to catch him. He's going to tag him up, going to have him one shot. Chino, you can't overcommit. The pressure's on, rate it, and again, like one kill in like a minute and a half. 
He was there weak. <laughs> the grenade came in. Sadly for Chino, the ankle was shown and raided still on the street. Glide bomb's good, but an artillery barrage and a fighter pilot would have been better. I mean, he'll take it, uh, even though, you know, it, it sounds bad when you say a minute and a half and only one kill, but it was to at least try to get streaks, and it's not like they were profusely losing on the Crane Hill. Again, I think what he was doing was absolutely the right call. Now, though, on the flip side of things, Huke, well, he's playing aggressive enough that Red Reserve a little bit turtled back into barrels, and by the time they get to the hill, Chino knows where to look. He's able to find two, looking for more, switches the PPSH, picks it up, goes for the instant challenge, and he's going to get streaks. Well, the fast way, doesn't need to play it slow, plays it fast, gets in their face, and gets traded up. I other than the, the, the counter main AR himself. And again, we only see the glide bomb, so one either side here for the squads. Chino's going to be taking down. There's a big push from Zero. All four players are spawning right at the back. Zero should be taken down here. And a beautiful stun coming in from Huke there. Will deny. Glide bomb invested, though. No kill. And here is the counter glide bomb. No kill either. However, we're seeing one player spawn out. This is where maybe Red Reserve can break into this main street. Still 50 seconds left on it. Joe, he's going to be the one on the flank. He's taken down, so now Envy can really focus. Fire on the backside. Chino does get sniffed out, so Red Reserve, they're open. They can go for the pressure. They can get some nades inside the hill. Zero can fly around the back, but the nades, it looks like they're not connecting. Finally, one falls in. Scraps cleans them up, but Envy, they're winning the gunfights. It's Decimate that's able to pick up the two. Streak, by the way, rated, apparently working on streaks again. That's his fifth kill in a row, 22 and 9. He's playing for KD, but you can do that when he got such a huge lead, and he says, hey, give me the 100 points or the, the spawn points on the next hill. I don't want to fight for those final seconds. I need the streaks. He feels he needs Needs the streaks to get this win, and well, for now, uh, the hold on tin is about as good as it gets for Red Reserve, but the hill hasn't popped just until now. 119 plays 156. Chance this game is slightly favoring Envious, but Red Reserve and rated once again on another streak here, rated 23 and 9. He's having a really strong performance. Can he find the head of Huke? Always worried. <laughs> he can sniff out classic. He just needs one more kill. There it is, full streaks for Red Reserve. Does get taken down, so Envy, they're going to be able to contest, but not if Joe has anything to say about it. Coming over from the side, is able to clean up one, and now they got the artillery down to help him out. So now you know the pressure. It's either going to be coming from mid or the backside, and Zero's waiting for it, has a free aim. Tags up two, doesn't finish either kill. Now Scraps is going to go try to hunt, but none of these gunfights are coming out on top. Now Joe buys Lonesome inside the hill, and he just gets dropped as well. So the artillery is burned, and Red Reserve barely get anything off of it. More importantly for Envy, well, they have this set up for barrels, but Zero says, hey, I'll take the time. I'll go all the way around for the flank. I'll try and make the play. Let's see if he can pull something off. Red Reserve, they've got a terrible spawn down by Useless here. Zero knows he needs to stay alive. But he's waiting for Raided. He's waiting for some kills to come on in. Glide bomb invested. One kill. That's going to be Chino. But now the pinch potential. Zero finds one. Will be traded out by Hugh. Envy still have that spawn, but Red Reserve, they're in control of the hard point. Now the kill feed lights up blue. And Envy, they push on through. They've got the control. There's still 30 seconds on this left chance. And this could be huge for Envy to get. They could blow up in the lead. Red Reserve, they're trying to contest. It's just one player inside the hill, but he stayed alive long enough for his teammates to come and help him out. So it comes down to the gunfights. Classic's able to find one. He gets traded. Joe surges forward. He's able to find one. Chino finds two. I think it was three in that stretch. And, well, the kills go back and forth, but better spawns OP. Envy, they get through the artillery. They get through the glide bomb, and they got a, what, a 40? Going to make it 50-point lead by the end of this going into Crane. Yes, I think Raiden has one more streak in the back pocket, but he's going to have to use it perfectly. STG in hand. They need all this time to get right back in it. Decimate. And his buddies pushing on through fire. Traded out. Huki is going to pick up those kills. And look at that. The useless spawn comes in. This way, the red reserve, they need to turn around. They need to focus on the important things. Joe is just going to hit the deck there. And Raided coming to save him. When's his fighter pilot coming in, though? That's the question. Great shot from Raided. Trying to push this to a game five. 
He doesn't even need the fighter pilot. They are going to be pushing in from fire. And on the backside, he can call it in if he wants. But they got everything covered. They got a player watching the flank. They have players in fire and envy. It's such a long walk. And by the time they get there, it's pointless. So I don't even think he's going to use this on uh, statue unless he has to. I think he's saving it all the way for the sandbag. So uh, many years down the road, it looks like envy breaks inside. But it's going to be a counter because he got two players up over top. But Joe wow. is shooting everyone but decimate. So they'll take the final few seconds. And decimate, by the way, he gets one kill down low. He then turns on a player in fire, drops down the stairs, gets another out the hill, then turns and looks up and gets another four kills. Crucial stuff for Envious. However, 55 seconds left on the statue. They can end it here, but the fighter pilot's going to be coming in. They should at least take a couple out. Basically, Tap finds two as Scraps cleans up that one in Red Reserve. They're going to retake this statue and try and push this a little bit closer towards that main street here. They've got a perfect setup right now. This is a very do doable game for Team Red Reserve or Team Envious. It is anyone's game up for grabs. But the setup right now, you see the kill feed on the left side, all Red Reserve. And again, not a must-win game for them it, overall for the playoff standings, but in this series, absolutely. And they are trying to make it happen. Scraps running a rampage, rated, by the way, 34 kills. Envy, though, surging for those next spawns. Wow. This cannot be any closer. We tie at 226, but Red Reserve, they take the lead. And now the pinch comes in. Red Reserve, they've got the spawns. They're working towards streaks. Chino turns around and burns, but Chino and Hugh go massive for Team Envious. They send Red Reserve down to the docks. And now the tables have turned. Envious have just shut it down. Everyone in this division right now is watching it. They're rooting for Red Reserve. They want Envy to get put down farther. But if Envy gets this win again, it would be massive for their chances to make playoffs. Though it's Red in the kill feed. Joey's able to find two. Looking for the third. Hugh gets the trade. It comes down to the 1v1. Zero comes out on top. Now Red Reserve's in the hill, and they can win it here. Now Envy, they have one opportunity. They got to get the break. Three players pushing from the side. Zero denies one. Decimate falls. A one-on-one -on -one that's crucial. Huke finds him. Rated is the only one in the hill. They need to get him out. The time is ticking away. It's not going to happen. Red Reserve are going to push this to a game five. And my goodness, like you said, all the players, whether they're in the pro lounge or back home or wherever they're watching, they wanted and was rooting for Red Reserve right there. And I felt like Envy when Chino and Huke got that huge two-piece for both of them. I thought it was over. They had the opportunity. They had one shot, but they let it slip, and you can't let those slip. I mean, you're going an S&D, and, &D and uh, yes, you came out on top of the first one. It was around 11, so the pressure is on as much as it could be. If Envy gets this win again, their playoff chances are boosted massively, despite the fact that they got two more series to play. And if they falter here, their road gets so much tougher, unbelievably so. So we'll see if they can clutch up. Wow. I'll tell you what, very, very close. We had a feeling at the start of that we were around barrel building. It was all tied up. We can see these teams going head to head and putting those heads. Well, search and destroy St. Marie is going to be the thing that decides this series. Red Reserve winning both the hard points. Search and destroy and CTF going in favor of the boys in blue. We're going back to search and destroy. We'll be right back.
game five around the corner here. Europe's best in red reserve taking on North American Titan. Envious. We've seen some star-studded performance from both squads there, but a very close hard point will push this to this game five. It's going to be on St. Marie. But both hard points going in favor of Red Reserve. The SMD CTF goes to Envious. Any surprises? Did you expect this chance? What are you thinking about the series so far? Give me an overview. I thought the CTF was a surprise. I, I think that's the only thing that kind of blew me out of the water. Uh, I thought the Docs SMD could kind of go either way. I think yeah. the last time they played it, it was also around 11, despite the fact that Rated dropped 19 kills. Going into St. Marie, though, I'm assuming this is correct. JP is rarely wrong, but it almost doesn't seem believable. Apparently on St. Marie, SMD, Red Reserve, 4-0. Envy hasn't played it since Anaheim, since Anaheim at okay. least, okay. which seems mind boggling that like you would walk yourself into that situation, but we'll see. Uh, again, Envy, like on the CTF, for example, I thought it was going to be concerning. They pulled something out of the bag. They look fantastic. So we'll see if, uh, if they have anything cooked up for their opponent. Exciting to see, uh, of course, Envy, Red Reserve, two amazing teams here. Both these teams looking to obviously get to playoffs. One of them has already got their ticket, that being Red Reserve. Envy trying to fight their way in. They've got three games left, this being one of them. Epsilon and EG are the other two. EG, of course, being tomorrow. But it's all smiles from Red Reserve, and I, I do think that's something that Scraps does bring to, to the squad, is kind of those good vibes, the, you know, the happy attitude, if you like. But he's probably saying, have we gone to game five? It's absolutely mind-blowing. Around those lines, I'm guessing. I'm sure like the you gave us the clean version, which is perfectly fine. I appreciate the translation, but I kind of wanted to see more sniper play from Scraps. Like honestly, some of the stuff he was doing on docks, it's just absurd to watch. It, it genuinely is. No matter how much you snipe in this game, there's some pros that just kind of kick it up another notch, and it seems like their aim is perfect. I have no idea if that's going to be the case, <laughs> but uh, this is what I always kind of dream about when I think of game fives. I only think of snipers, Momo. Chance, I've seen the clips. I've seen you rocking that sniper. Here's a PPSH. It feels bad. Dashi needs to watch out. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I think it'll be okay. It'll be okay. That's <laughs> okay. Dashi's fine. Game five, round one. Search and destroy. St. Marie de Mont, Red Reserve, Team Envious. Let's get into this one. Paradox guiding you through all the action as our observer. And we're already seeing snipers here. This is what chance, this is what I and what you love to see. But interestingly enough, Red Reserve, they're in B already. This goes against literally everything I've ever felt about this map. Envy just completely gives up the B site. And I think Red Reserve doesn't even, like, know what's going on. Like, they haven't planted the bomb. I think they're just confused. Joe's watching the flank. But the opportunity is here. Uh, I mean, now Chino's kind of wiggled himself over. They're going to be coordinating those nades. And actually, it seems that's exactly what Red Reserve was waiting for. The nades come in. Zero says, oh, now I get the fray plant. Let's get it. We got full control. Kills get traded out. And you see, well, Joe waited for that the entire round. Now you got to make some big plays with the sniper, make some big plays with the STG. And, well, the second thing doesn't happen. Can Chino be a hero? That, that's the one thing, like, as a player, like, if I was huge there, I'd want to throw my controller out the window. Like, when you're on the flank, you're nowhere near the bomb set, and just someone sat in the corner, played the flank, and that being Joe. He's a sneaky little beaver, and he's found that one. And Red Reserve, they start searching his very strong. However, they started the last one strong chance. For you guys at home, they were 4-0 up very quickly. Joe was like 7-1. It was all going so smoothly, and then Envy has just turned it around. Well, we'll see if they can do something similar, albeit it's very early on, but I, I really just like what I saw from Red. They got B-side control, waited for the nades as soon as they come in. Zero made his move, trade the kills back and forth, and of course, you got Joe waiting on the flank the entire time. They're undefeated on this map, and they're undefeated for the reason they play it very, very well. Envy, though, they're going to be walking over towards this B site. And it looks like Red Reserve, they're going to get those nades out early, try to stop him uh, from getting in. And it looks like Rated's able to find one. Hugh does get in the site. The man disadvantage. I think a lot of grenades have been used up for Red Reserve at this point, but the bomb's going down. It's going to be three players watching three different ways. Chino, Hugh, and Classic. The problem is, one of them fall, it all goes to pot. And hello, here's a smoke. Doesn't matter for Classic, though. Joe's going to be denied for that one. And now, just a waiting game. Still grenades coming in. You can see Classic back and forth. There's only three ways to watch. There's only three players. He's going to find another two go down. And surely, Chino can't clutch up. And Zero, he'll be the one that's trying to take that diffuse. He's like, okay. No, he's not. Completely wrong. It's rated. He's got a two-kill streak. And he's working towards those glide bombs again. Strong start. Couple of rounds here. Red Reserve looking good. 
X-ray vision isn't good enough when you got the man disadvantage. Again, a very good retake. That's just the power of smoke. Smokes to get back in this site. Like Red Reserve, they had their bases covered, right? We saw from the first round, Envy, they expend all their nades, and they're like, oh, crap, what do we do now? Well, Red Reserve, they use all their nades at the start. They use all those, and oh, crap, well, what do we do now? You smoke off the site, you go back in, uh, you create confusion. Make sure you can regain some sort of control. So Red Reserve, again, all bases covered. They're undefeated on the map for a reason. Another reason being, hey, you can just chuck all the nades in at once, Scraps can just win the one-on-one -on -one gunfight. You can get control the hard way, and now you get the bomb down. You got Scraps working on some score streaks. He got raided. I think he might earn or he's going to be 25 way. Yeah, he gets a glide bomb. He could call it in and just win the round, or they could win around the, the old-fashioned way, and they're going old-fashioned. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned day? I certainly do. Red Reserve 3-0. However, <laughs> I'm just getting flashbacks to map two. They've done this before. Are they going to let it slip again? Or are MB going to be able to adapt? Or are the streaks going to be too much? I mean, I don't even know what there is to adapt. Like, you found out if, the bomb, if they get the bomb down to B, like, you can't flake. It's hard to retake. <laughs> Go to A. And, and again, like, Envy, assuming those stats are right, like, they haven't played this map since Anaheim. The reps just aren't in, and they're dealing with a red reserve who are pulling a bunch of different tricks out of the bag. Can they do it? Yes. Is it tough? Absolutely. And right now, well, they're desperate. They're just going to be playing for picks. Okay, well, here we go. Classic leading towards A. I think Red Reserve know as well. They're like, yep, we've showed them who's boss at B. Let's see if they can do it at A. Well, all that Joe has to do now, by the way, just watching the cross, it says, oh, they crossed the A, calling the glide bomb. You get that free kill. And frankly, even if that player peaks again, Raided can call it in. He'll be able to find him. He got two players out in the open. He's going to look for one in Classic in the smoke, but he'll take the free <laughs> one on Chino. Now they know the bomb's over by A. They don't have control if he needs to. Just throw the artillery on top. Just secure the round if you really want to, but so far they don't need to. Pressure's on Envy to make a play, and, well, that might just be the opening they need. Poor Gino, just laying down, trying to crawl away from that glide bomb. Who's having none of it. There's the barrage. No bomb plant, and there is the fighter pilot. 3v2. 20 seconds left. And as well, Zero's in the perfect position just to say hello, goodbye, and good night. Decimate, last one alive, has been spotted. It's going to be a long-range gunfight. Decimate, the PPSH is going nowhere near Zero. 4-0 to Red Reserve. There's so many rounds of SND where I feel like you can pinpoint, like, here was the mistake. Here was, like, the lane that was open. Here was the bad yeah. timing. Here was the kill that didn't get traded. I'm trying to think of, like, what Envy could do differently, and it feels like there's almost not much. Like, Red Reserve is almost playing just perfectly, playing perfectly around every single streak that they have, playing perfectly to earn the streaks. They've retaken and got control of the bomb site in two different ways. They're playing around nades. They're playing with their nades. They use smokes when they don't have them. They're doing everything. Uh, again, Red Reserve, they're just looking clean for the moment. But we did see this uh, on the docks S&D of Red Reserve getting four in a row. Then Envy bounced right back. Envy, they absolutely have to. Uh, the ball's in their court. The pressure is on. Red Reserve, a very, very slow round number five here. Maybe trying to play for this pick. Maybe just waiting to use this fighter pilot to open up B. That is not what you want to see. That's a, a good answer. As Raided does go down, and Raid is the ones with the streaks, so... Okay, well, Zero has some streaks, too. That's going to open up the B site here and push them a little bit further back. They're investing streaks here. They need to capitalize. Scraps there, one shot away from death. He's going to find the head of Chino, and now that bomb is more than likely going to go down. But no, the grenade comes in. Zero has to stop because Zero is taking damage, but all he wants is the plant. He gets the plant, he gets the streaks. Oh. He pops up. There's two players waiting there. Grenade doesn't connect. He finds two. However, streaks have been acquired. Chance, though. They were 4-0 up in the first one. They didn't have streaks to use. St. Marie's a different ball game, I feel. With streaks, with fighter pilots, artillery barrages, I think feel like Red Reserve. They're in a much better position here. I mean, like on docks, the opponent has streaks. What do you do? Oh, go play inside Tim. Play passively, play in cold, play underground. Both of these bomb sites about as open as they could possibly be. Obviously, we saw from Chino, yes, you can dodge the streaks, but uh, just an artillery barrage on a bomb site just locks it down for so long. They're so tough to play around. So Envy, again, they got to be perfect. They're going to have to build some streaks of their own. We'll see if they can go crazy. It looks like they got a lot of nades out on Raided, but it's only going to force them back, and it only forces them back for a half second. He still gets inside. That is too many fighter pods, by the way. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and they have the positioning. Here we go. A lot of players on the edge, on the cusp there. Here's the smoke. Here's the 
pre-fire gonna come in? That's the question. Raiden, he's gonna jump straight past him. Hit fire comes in. I think the help came from above there. And now just spraying around the bomb site. He's gonna be traded out. Scraps on the other side. Gonna find a kill. And now it's a 3v2. Are they going to even need the streaks? I would use it. I would 100% use the streak. You know, I they're on the bomb site. Throw it down. You're going to force them out. You know, they got to go top red. They got to come out the back. And where do you have players waiting? Top red and out the back. They're bunched up right next to each other. They're going to try to make a play. And well, they might be able to get it on scraps. It forces them to back down. So the round not dead yet, but scraps, he's in a power position. He finds one looking for the second, just has to buy time. And he does just that. 18 seconds left. Classic. Uh, again, there's too much he has to do. He's it's trapped. So much. Yeah, he's trapped. And again, that's where they see exactly where he's going. They're almost happy to just let him plant if he wants to. But he's going to go for the kill. He's going to find the first. Four seconds left. I thought he would challenge him, but Classic anticipated maybe the split. Another round to Red Reserve. They're happy with that one. Uh, yeah, again, like it, Classic, he finds the second. Maybe you're thinking, oh, the 1v1, he has a chance. But again, Red Reserve played it perfectly with the other player in the back, making sure he's well out of range. One player just has to dive in, check the bomb, make sure he can't plant. You do it right as they're five seconds on the clock. They use the streaks almost perfectly. Uh, I mean, Scraps has to play around it, obviously, but pretty clean. Uh, I guess that's a couple things burned out of the Red Reserve kind of... Uh, like pocket the score tricks. I don't know what the good word for that would be. Now Cube still the pressure's on. He's able to find one, knows the second is passed, but gets traded before it can happen. He got a 3v3. Fighter pilot's coming in. Zero doesn't even need the help. But he's gonna get it. Trying to take out classic scraps does the business. 1v3. Red Reserve come up clutch. Search and destroy St. Marie. A one-sided affair. However, it's a close series. It's a game five. Red Reserve. They're trying to nail down that first seed. Envy, though, that was a, a game you want to win. That's a game where you want to go into Epsilon, knowing you've just taken down Euros best. You want to go into that final game against EG tomorrow and just put the nail in the coffin. That's a, that's a tough one to swallow. I mean, this series literally makes it much easier for FaZe to get through. It makes it easier for EG to get through. It makes it easier for TK and Echo Fox. Easier for everyone. Envy had the opportunity to pour the pressure on. They didn't. Does that mean they're out of the playoff opportunity? No. Uh, now that means they have to beat EG. They have to beat Epsilon. And they have to have a lot of stuff go their way. So if you're an Envy fan, the dream is not dead. It's just not. It's closer to a nightmare. It's a little shaky. A little it's a shaky. little shaky. He's not as bad as Splice and Epsilon just yet. Uh, but they're on that urge. They're on the edge of the mountain and ready to be pushed off. However, Red Reserve there. They're kind of just teetering on the edge there. Playing with Envious. I believe Raid is on the stage. But before we go down for Raided, I do want to just ask the question, Chance. Red Reserve right now. We see them come second, obviously, in major tournaments a couple of times. We've got playoffs around the corner. Is this just them trying to not only solidify first place, but get as much confidence going into playoffs and champs as possible? Can they can they take a home a title really this year is the question. Literally the only thing for if they just consistently start winning their CTFs, they can consistently well beat basically everyone in the game. They go toe-to-toe okay. -to -toe against Rise Nation. Maybe some other teams in Vision B kind of pick it up a little bit. But right now, Red Reserve, if they fix their CTF, yes, they look like a team that can take home a chip. Okay, well, I believe we've got Jess down on the main stage with Ray to, for a PlayStation instant reaction. Thanks, Momo. That was a great series, and that second hard point in particular was very close back and forth. How did you manage to turn that, turn that around in your favor right at the end? Um, I just had to go get uh, dad mood and just carry my sons for uh, the last two maps, but uh, <laughs> it's good that anyone on this team can go off when they need to. Great. So you were very confident, obviously, going into that matchup. What happened to your confidence when Envy was able to take those two maps in a row? Uh, nothing happened to the confidence. Uh, we're good at all modes, even though we still haven't won a CTF. It's just like, for some reason on hardpoint, we outslay everyone, and then on CTF, we just stop getting kills, and I don't know, I don't know why the problem is with that, but I don't know, we just need to start slaying more on CTF, and we'll be fine. All right. Now, before this match, also, you had said uh, we're better than all the other teams. What do you think makes Red Reserve such a strong team? Um, I don't know. I think it's just slaying power since we picked up Matt, like we added while we were missing, and I think... Uh, well, like a few of the casters say in this division, we have a lot of mediocre teams, whereas the other division has a lot of contenders, and I think we're a contender. Great. All right, well, thank you so much for the interview. This has been your PlayStation Instant Reaction. We'll be right back after this quick break.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had an incredible 4th of July, but it's time to get back to business. First series of the day here, an absolute roller coaster. And you know, it's gonna be pretty grim for Envy after this outcome. We're gonna break down all of that. My name is Rich, I'm gonna be your host. I'm joined on the desk by Revan and Nameless. Guys, let's actually talk about this. We're gonna have Red Reserve staying on top of this series. It was not easy for him. Oh yeah, it's definitely close. I mean, I thought after that first map, like if you watch Envy and how they play in their last couple of games, like the maps that they lose, nor they have just one guy show up and then everybody else is kind of non-existent. It was the same story in that first map, and I thought it was gonna carry through to the rest of the series, but there are opportunities for Envy, especially in that fourth map to close out. Unfortunately, things just don't go their way. Uh, you know, one of the things that I wanna talk about too, Nameless, but we, we gotta talk about just about all of these maps, but CTF seems to continue to be a struggle here for Red Reserve. Oh yeah, Red Reserve have lost a lot of CTFs in the last few weeks, and I think that uh, that's their one like glaring weakness at the moment. I mean, they clutch up there, they win that, but like CTF the last few series has not looked good for them at all. But I mean, in terms of that envious series right there, like that first map, they got they outslayed Red Reserve and still lost the map. Like you can't let that happen. And that game four, Envy could have easily closed that out as well. So there was definitely moments in that series where Envy could have won it. I know they're gonna go back and be like, dang, maybe if we just clutched up we we could be in playoffs right now but we have to get the information from league ops i'm not sure if they're officially out of the running but it's looking so for them at the moment and i remember back at anaheim jp actually tweeted out a stat about red reserve saying how they actually get out slayed and, and they have like a seven to four like win percentage so when it comes to getting out slayed and still winning the hard points and speaking about their ctf they even played their best ctf map in the series london docks and they still lose it yeah i, I think the stat that just popped up on the screen was oh and six so wow. it's re really rough for them in ctf and also to touch on what JP said, I actually saw during that series, he tweeted something out as well. He's like, Red Reserve, colon, Money Hill over kills. And it definitely is kind of a thing with them. We see, and we were talking about it during the first map. It's like, are they getting outslayed right now? Are they not? It's definitely something to think about with Red Reserve. Definitely something with their play style. Another thing that I do want to say is Envious technically is not out of this yet. They could still have that dream run. They could make it into the top four. Things could happen to make that possible. But, uh, I could also become a pro player one of these days, right? Yeah, it's, it's out it's, of their it's, hands. It, it's pretty much out of their hands, and uh, like, like it's out of mine. I'm just looking for the right team, so, so hit me up on uh, Twitter. You're not going to be a pro, Rich. Maybe. It's, Never. Still, it's still technically possible, according to League Ops. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, 
So team Red Reserve versus Team Envious. Now Team Envious, like we said, going to be quite a dire situation here. Still possible out of their hands. They can't just win out and be able to get it here. So yes, this was somewhat a do or die situation, but Red Reserve, they can still be looking at first place. Yep, so they're still on top of their division. They're looking to secure that number one seed going to the playoffs. But if you're in the NB camp right now, you gotta be feeling a little bit uneasy. It's never a fun situation to be in when you're relying on other teams to lose in order for you to advance. It's always nice to have your destiny in your own, own hands. and you know, coming to this first match, well, it was, and they had the opportunity to close it out. Unfortunately, just weren't going to. And you go into that last map, like two players from red get fully streaked out. Like you're not winning St. Marie's Search and Destroy when you give up two full sets, full sets of streaks. Is this CTF weakness that we see in red reserve, do you think that that could potentially be an opening for a team to take the throne from them and actually take first place in the division? Well, I mean, they're sitting at 10 and three now. So if they just win their next series, I'm pretty sure they're guaranteed that first place spot, seeing as the other teams have four losses already. So, I mean, I think they just look forward to the next series, maybe win that yeah, they can afford to lose a ctf and still win the series so i think they go back they fix their ctf and they're looking like a team that can win a championship but uh, i don't think losing ctf is going to be like that big of a bane in their their existence in this in this division there, there's some they're crazy first. things crazy things that we need to think about today and uh two of the the teams that i really want you to keep your eyes on uh, it's essentially the entire bubble Thank two you. through fifth you need to think about tk eg you obviously need to think about both of them already in the top four they're going to try to keep that and they're going to have a match against each other today and then like you said echo fox and phase that's one of those matches where we could actually maybe see that top four switch up Next match, though, probably the least consequential match that we could have here. It's going to be Splice versus Epsilon. And Splice versus Epsilon, both of these.